So Calvin, let's move to, uh, let, let's just pretend, right? That mm -hmm. the foreclosure market has opened up and auctions are going on. Okay. And yep. they will be, they will yep. be. Um, mm -hmm. You've got a lot of experience in that and you've got some really, really important lessons learned from mistakes that you made early on when you were at the foreclosure auctions. So um, share with us some um, insights that people could uh, learn from uh, in order to avoid doing some of that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I've made a lot of mistakes and, and, you know, if people told you that they haven't made many mistakes, the chances are that they haven't done much in general, because <laughs> that's how you learn is by doing all this stuff and figuring it out. If you can learn from other people's mistakes, that's well and good, but you, you tend to learn from your own uh, a lot more. Um, you know, buying it in the foreclosure auctions is, is not real estate 101. It is relatively advanced. You do need to, you know, pay cash for the property on the same day the auction occurs. You literally need to be bidding at 11 o'clock in the morning and wiring your purchase price at 4 p.m. Uh, you're, you're stuck with any kind of unpaid property taxes, unpaid utility bills, uh, you know, on, on clear title chains. I mean, you're, you're stuck with all of that. So you need to be very good at researching a chain of title in the property. And, you know, the biggest mistakes, you know, we made early on were you know, getting some of you know getting the, some of the basic stuff wrong was just assuming you know getting the renovation numbers wrong. You know, you're taking a look at a property that might be occupied, and you might think, "Oh, that roof looks okay," and then you buy it, and it turns out it's not okay at all. So there's an extra ten thousand dollars on your renovation budget, or it might have been vacant for several years, and you think you're just going to get you know start renovation straight away. But you know, one thing you need when you start renovation is is utilities. You need to turn them on, and there could be enormous unpaid utility bills with properties running into the thousands of dollars that, that you're on the hook for. You know, you're literally the, the water company for that street has a monopoly on water to your property. And if they're saying you need to pay us three and a half, four thousand dollars, which happened to me several times, or we're not turning on the water, they kind of got you. You, you know, you're going to have to do it. Um, you know, just buying properties with, with people in them. Uh, you know, the eviction process can be quite long and tedious. You might think some people might tell you it takes four weeks, but realistically it might take eight or nine. Um, you know, I bought, you know, ones with large unpaid HOA bills. Um, I bought properties where we didn't do, uh, you know, check the, the permit information properly, uh, where you might think there's a 2016 AC, but that might've been for, for some minor AC repair, not a brand new system. Um, you know, we've, we've bought properties where, uh, you know, there was, um, subsidence repairs, you know, literally, uh, you know, sinkhole issues with them that, that we didn't notice because you you thought you were buying in Newport Ritchie, but you're actually buying in the city of Newport Ritchie, which is this little 10 block radius with its own little permit office that you forgot to check. So, you know, you really need to have, uh, you know, you go through enough of these Jay, and then you tend to get a, a long checklist of things that you need to go through before you bid on a property and, and, and title is a crucial one but also just getting better at estimating the renovation cost of a property. Cause that's not always easy with a foreclosure because they're often occupied. And even if they're not occupied, they're usually often totally boarded up and, and you don't know what's going on inside. So yeah, I've, I've run the full gamut. I've made a lot of, you know, five to $15,000 mistakes in foreclosure auctions. Thankfully I haven't made any $50,000 mistakes in, in foreclosure auctions, but the people that do those are the ones that might buy, uh, a second mortgage and are still responsible for the first mortgage or might, you know, think that they're bidding on the property, but they're bidding on a HOA foreclosure and they're still stuck with the mortgage. Um, uh, you know, a very rookie mistake to make is, is you've done all your work and you've got all your numbers down and you really want to buy a property, but you don't have enough money in deposit on your foreclosure account because you forgot to top it up the last time you bought a property. I've, I've done that one too. And everybody's been super annoyed because you're sending field guys out there to look at it. You're getting attorneys to check title on you. You're getting other people to crunch numbers and input permit information. And then when you're about to bid, you realize, oh my God, I don't have enough money in the account for a deposit. So a lot, lot of stuff, you know, a lot of silly mistakes over the years, but you know, the, the good ones uh, outweigh them, I guess.